Okay, let's talk about installing PowerShell 7 on our Windows device. And I know one of the first questions that comes to mind is, wait a minute, PowerShell is already installed on our Windows device, right? And it is. In fact, if we tie, if we do a search for PowerShell, you'll see Windows PowerShell comes up, Windows PowerShell ISC. Also, if you right-click on our little Start button here, we'll see PowerShell and PowerShell Admin. I'm going to go ahead and open up PowerShell in Admin mode for a minute. So we get this little notification saying, are you sure you want to allow this app to make changes? It's the UAC. So we say yes. Now, if you do dollar sign PS version table, it's going to show us that our PowerShell is actually running version 5. And I'm going to actually blow this thing up a little bit. So I'm going to customize this. I'm going to go to properties. And in my font, I can set my font size. So let's blow that up to about 18. You can also change here. You can change your font style. You can change your layout. You can change your colors. You can do all kinds of things here. So I'm going to do that. Hopefully that's a little, let's go a little bit bigger. So I just want to make sure that it's nice and easy for you guys to read. So I'm going to go to 24. That should give us a pretty huge font. There we go. Pretty huge font. All right, so a PS version table, and you'll see right here we are in PS version 5.1. Now, the current version of PowerShell is version 7, and we don't have it. However, there is a difference here, so I want to show you something. And I right-click on this, you see we're running Windows PowerShell. Windows PowerShell is currently in version 5.1, but Microsoft has separated off PowerShell from Windows, and in doing so, by the way, they've done it with the idea of making it accessible to different platforms as well. So the version of PowerShell that ships with Windows is Windows PowerShell version 5. The current version of PowerShell is just PowerShell. It's not Windows PowerShell, and it is version 7. Now, before we get into installing PowerShell 7, I do want to show you a couple of, or one other thing here, and that is Windows PowerShell 5 includes the ISC or the integrated scripting environment. And you saw it when we did a search here for PowerShell. You see all the PowerShell ISC, or from within PowerShell, you can just type ISC and it'll bring it up. All right, so I'm going to go to View, and I want to show the script pane. And right here is the ISC. And the idea behind the ISC is that it wants to make it, it's an environment to make it easier to run uh, and script PowerShell commands. So up here you have your script pane and you can start working on um, working on your script and as you do notice it's going to pop up and try to be helpful. So I typed get-comm and it says oh it thinks I want get command and if I tab out it'll give me the rest of the get command commandlet. And then also as I'm typing let me do get-comm Okay, it'll also pop up here and show me all of my different options, uh, my arguments or parameters for the get command commandlet. And this happens, I'm just going to finish that out, and this happens here in the script pane. Now the cool thing about this is I can take commands and copy and paste, control C and control V, and execute these commands in my interactive console. Or I can take commands from my interactive console. Notice when I do that, spell help correctly. Again, it's trying to help, so you saw that pop up. And I can test a command in my interactive console, get it the way I want it to, and then paste it, control V, into my script pane. So this becomes really useful in our plan with these two be, uh, when I'm writing scripts. The other thing we have over here is we have a command finder. And I can sort this by module. We'll talk about modules a little bit later. Or I can do a search for a command. So I'm going to do a search for get command. I'm going to find it, get command, and then this gives me all of my arguments. And I can put in any arguments that I want. And when I've got it the way I want it, I can either run the command, which will put it down here, or insert the command. And oops, clear that. That'll make my life a little bit easier and insert the command and it'll put it here but not execute it or copy the command and then I can paste it there. And I can do that after putting in all of these. I'm going to do git command with a noun of service and then copy and paste 
and you'll see that it's propagated the rest of the command. All right, that's the ISC. ISC is a very cool, very useful tool. There are a couple of drawbacks to not using the ISC, but relying on it. So it's great for scripting, and a lot of people say, I want to use the ISC because I want all the prompts to help me out when I'm learning PowerShell. And in a way, that's really cool because it gives us all of those. The biggest drawback to doing that, however, is that when we do that, we sometimes rely on the ISC maybe a little too much. And when we're back in a regular PowerShell environment, it doesn't give us all of those same cool little features. That becomes an issue if you're working on, let's say, a server that only that doesn't have a desktop experience install. So the only way to interact with it is PowerShell. And if you're relying on the ISC, the ISC doesn't exist in that environment. The other issue is that the ISC is not in PowerShell 7. So while it is a great tool, realize it's probably on its way out and it does have some limited capabilities. Uh, particularly in the fact that you can't use it in some environments. Okay, let's talk about PowerShell 7. So this is the current version. I want to do PowerShell 7, and the command I'm going to use is going to be winget. So it's going to be winget, and I want to search winget for Microsoft PowerShell. And it's going to go out and look, and you can see our little spiraling thing here saying, hey, I'm working on searching uh, when get for PowerShell, specifically Microsoft PowerShell, because there's other PowerShell tools out there. Now, running when get is honestly not the fastest thing in the world. But there, while it's thinking, there is one thing that I want to uh, let you know about. If you type when get and you get an error, that's because when get is part of the app installer. Uh, sir, or the app installer tool. And so if, it, if you get an error saying it can't find it, what you want to do is go to the Microsoft Store, find app installer, and then update it if needed. All right, so here we found Microsoft PowerShell version 7.3, and then Microsoft PowerShell Preview, which is 7.4. I want to use the standard one. So I'm going to do when get install and I want to do Microsoft PowerShell. Now you can if you want to specify a little bit more you can do dash dash ID Microsoft PowerShell dash dash source when get that should install it as well. It just specifies things a little bit more if I do the Microsoft dot PowerShell it's going to assume that that is the tool that I want, or the tool that I want, so I didn't have to specify the ID. It assumes that's the ID. And then it assumes the source is uh, when get. Now, this is going to take a little bit, a little while. So rather than hanging out here and just waiting for it, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, and then we're going to come back to it once this is installed. Okay, it took about three minutes, and it finished the download, and it is installing right now. So you can see right here we had our progress. All right, there we go. PowerShell 7 is installed. Now, I'm going to exit out here of my current PowerShell session, and that actually does not change this. But if I do a search for PowerShell... You'll see I now have Windows PowerShell ISC, Windows PowerShell, and here is PowerShell 7. Different icon. I am going to run as administrator. Same thing, UAC. And here is my PowerShell. Let me go ahead and change my properties again here real quick. I think we decided 24 looked good on the previous one. There we go. And same command, dollar sign PS version. Now notice as I do this, and you might not be able to see this on the video because this is dark gray on a black screen, but if you're following along, you should see it try to finish out the PS version table. And if you hit the tab key, it'll finish it out, run it, and see we are now running PowerShell version 3.7. Now I did say that didn't change this here. This is still... PowerShell 5. We'll just set the two side by side here. Dollar sign PS version table. 
And there we go. So we now are running the two of them side by side. And that's the key thing here. PowerShell 7 does not replace PowerShell 5 yet. Uh, and the reason it doesn't is because there are some things that work in PowerShell 5 that don't work in PowerShell 7 and vice versa. There are some things that work in 7 that don't work in 5. So those are a couple of things that you're going to want to be aware of. Now, I did say that PowerShell 7 doesn't have the ISC. Now, my ISC is still available because um, I have it in 5, but notice it's not here in 7. I can't use it. So it doesn't recognize it. So what Microsoft has done is instead of using the ISC in PowerShell 7, their suggestion is to use VS Code. So the way we do that is we go, wait for Edge, I want to do without my data. There we go. I have not used this yet, so there we go. So we're going to do, um, we're going to search for Visual Studio, and we want Visual Studio Code. So we don't want the full Visual Studio. We want this one, code.visualstudio.com. And so we can take this. We're going to download it for Windows here, and our download is going to start. This will actually go fairly quickly. You'll notice we're already almost done with it much, much faster than using WinGet. And we want to open the file and install VS Code. Yes, we accept the terms of the license agreement. And VS Code then is what we'll use instead of the ISC if we're working with PowerShell. So I mean, we can use um, VS Code with PowerShell 5 as well. It's just Microsoft's attempt to get everything together in one place. Let's go ahead and launch VS Code. And once it comes up, I'm going to go to my extensions. And I want to add an extension for PowerShell. So I'm going to search PowerShell. And up comes PowerShell. And I'm going to go ahead and install my PowerShell extension. So that's installing right now. And that should take just a second. There we go. And now you'll see we have a little PowerShell tool over here. So we can open up PowerShell. And down here is our PowerShell terminal. It's basically that same part as that interactive section on uh, the ISC. And then I can create a new file. And I want to do a text file. And then I want to select a language. And I want to choose PowerShell. And so this gives me PowerShell, um, gives me the PowerShell awareness as I'm using VS Code. And so you'll see as I do git command now, and you'll see it's colorizing things. It's trying to determine what it is that I'm looking for. So it's prompting me along just the same way the ISC did. I don't have the little command explorer over here, but that's okay. So this is what we use in place of the ISC if we're using PowerShell 7. Okay, so there we go. We've installed PowerShell 7 and Visual Studio Code in order to work with PowerShell 7 in uh, a Windows environment. Remember, this key thing, some things work in 7, some work in 5. Most things are going to work okay in both, but that's just something to be aware of is sometimes you might need to shift back and forth if you're running both. Um, and then just make sure that whatever you're doing, you test in whatever you're, whatever environment you're going to be using, 7 or 5, or whatever, if you're doing a script, whatever your users are going to be using it with. Okay, there we go. We are now fully functional with PowerShell 7 in a Windows environment.